assalamu alaikum i am dr irfan i am working assalamu alaikum i am dr irfan ahmed choudhry i am working as a senior registrar in mayo hospital lahore as you all know that we have been doing some academic works for all our orthopedic friends and family under the banner of surviving orthopedics so today i am going to discuss and formulate something for my dear colleagues and for my friends who are just going to start their new life in orthopedic surgery the problem we face that whenever our residents come into any department they are not given the orientation that how this time must be spent so that in the end they don't have so many problems i have spent my residency and alhamdulillah the place where i spent my residency i feel that i was properly oriented there are some issues that uh, everybody faces and i i'm just making a small effort so that some some of you may get benefit from this so how the first year of orthopedic residency must be spent i'll upload the video for the second and third year as well but to make this video more fruitful i i am working on each year independently so that maximum uh, golden tips can be given to you people first of all if you have chosen orthopedic residency you must have completed your um, general surgery if you are fcps resident if you are ms resident then you spend the first 6 months over here and then general surgery over there and at some places it varies but so you have completed your rotations now you have uh, come in orthopedic department what things you must do so i have seen that many of our colleagues many of our friends they even have not done any uh, house job in orthopedic department they don't know much about orthopedic even i haven't done i didn't do the uh, house job so i was not that aware from orthopedic surgery i faced many uh, things many problems in the start but later on things settled so first of all this thing that i don't know anything about orthopedics so let's move on if you don't know so started from the zero you have come in orthopedic residency what is your aim well the aim is the most important aim is to get trained and to pass the exam there is nothing like that you have come into the residency and you start criticizing the system you start criticizing the supervisor you start and you just go away from your aim your aim is to pass the exam and to get yourself trained and remember training is always by almighty's mercy and those people they get maximum benefit who stay humble and sincere to their duties and to their training so my first message is be sincere to your training be sincere to your duties be goal oriented be systematic this training part must not be left must not be given an auto button it must be systematic you must know that what i have to do the time is passing the time will not stop so be goal oriented be systematic year wise set your goals i'll give you a brief review that what are the goals in the first year second year and third year today's video is for the first year year one first six months so in the first six months i'll say orient yourself get familiarized with the new world new ward new people new place maybe you have completed your mbbs from some other hospital and you are getting your training in other hospital so it takes time for every person to adjust yourself some take 3 months or some take 6 months so in the first 6 months what you have to do orientation of your specialty that what is orthopedics what things we encounter in orthopedics observe your observation must be very sound and strong in 6 months observe the environment 
keep taking information about the books and see the people who have passed the exam what are they doing what are the goals so what you will do keep gathering information from your seniors preferably a senior registrar who has just passed the exam and remember there are people in every at every place whom you have to avoid so stay away from depressors but be humble polite patient and sincere to your duties year one last six months now in the first six months you have get yourself oriented familiarized with every department now there is no excuse when the seventh month starts that you are not you are yet settling now the real game starts so in the next six months you have you have uh, encountered these different disciplines that there is indoor there is o ot there is opd and there is emergency department so what you have to do in the indoor what should i do and how i approach these are the patients who are admitted in ward get your name on beds get your beds allocated prepare those beds significance of ward beds is this that if you keep on preparing your ward bed for 3 years in the end nothing can stop you from passing exam by almighty's mercy allah's mercy so preparing ward beds is very important take advice from your seniors as well but meanwhile be oriented and prepare your beds complete your files sometimes we think that clerical work is a burden on resident but remember this clerical work is going to give you a lot of benefits when you are going to do your private practice in future what books to consult in indoor in indoor you must be having a clinical exam book in your pocket preferably when you are preparing your bed if it's a cold case if it's a case of knee ligamentous injury fixed flexion elbow deformity ctv anything you must have a clinical book in your pocket and uh, as you all know that our surviving orthopedics it's a pocket uh, we have made it pocket size and you can have it in the pocket you can use it in indoor and the other thing keep using ortho bullets maximally from your mobile this is for indoor patients if you fail to prepare your bed after first 6 months then you are doing injustice not only to the patient but to yourself as well now coming on to operation theater this is your 7 month 7th month and you are in your first year the most important thing is you have to stay patient be patient be tolerant don't jump and say i want surgery i want surgery no assist 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 and the first most important thing is just learn how to prepare a patient for surgery it will benefit you in your life remember this line and when you will complete your fcps or ms in the end you will remember my words that how to prepare a patient people pass and in the end when they do private practice they do not know and they make blunders in preparing a patient how to prepare a patient for surgery it will benefit you for this there is a beautiful chapter in campbell surgical techniques and approaches you can read first few pages for the surgical technique so campbell chapter first and apart from this keep watching videos on uh, youtube and online then operation theater what else you can do keep aosr app in your mobile from the very first day whatever procedure is being done you have prepared the patient you are a runner or keep that app on your mobile the aosr app it will help you a lot either if you are a assistant in a surgery or you are a runner in a surgery keep that app on your mobile then watch that case closely after the procedure get yourself familiarized with the procedure because orthopedics is a sub specialty that's a quite a different sub specialty we don't get ourselves uh, familiarized in our 
MBBS or in our house job. So get yourself familiarized with the procedures. It will take time. Get yourself familiarized with the instruments because there are a number of instrument trauma instruments. Then comes the implant, trauma implant, arthroscopy implants, and arthroplasty implants. So keep asking the nurses, keep asking the OTs, keep asking your seniors, and watch online what instrument I have seen today, and watch some booklets for instrument as well. Get yourself familiarized with the fracture type. Fracture. Whenever you have a case in emergency on your bed or in OPD, uh, try first of all try to look locate the fracture and then classify it. If you haven't classified a fracture and you have seen a patient, you have not seen anything because classification is very important. It the uh, treatment changes with classification orthopedics it, and it is very important. And in the end, don't be panic and try to class uh, all the uh, all the fractures have different type of classification, but try to uh, correlate them with AO classification as well. Then comes the OPD department. It varies in different hospital as per the rush in these hospitals so try to do opd in these six months under some supervision under some senior pgr or sr don't think that you know everything you don't know anything you have you need supervision so but don't be pain for your seniors uh, remember then don't irritate him too much and in every opd what you have to do keep one or two patient request a patient that kindly i want to examine you in detail can you stay for for an hour i'll discuss you with my senior and in the end of the OPD, request to your senior, discuss with him, and you may divide it reason wise that in seven, eight month I will do shoulder, elbow, and then so on. In OPD department, you must have a book uh, of clinical exam in your pocket. Surviving orthopedics clinical exam, we have made it pocket size, and we have made it in that way that even a first year resident can have a quick review in few minutes. We have simplified it. You uh, in OPD use the bullet uh, sections of the uh, of this book and online ortho bullets will also help you then comes the emergency department this department is very important for the resident life even for his skills for his exam and for his uh, later on private practice so receive most important part uh, receive every patient don't hesitate to do clerical work people think that clerical work uh, is useless no clerical work is very important it it teaches you a lot of things if if people say you they don't do the clerical work what uh, it is for no do that complete the files do everything of the patient complete the files write the treatment write the examination write history as well because in finally final exam history taking has a lot of numbers if you don't do uh, don't know how to take history you will fail learn how to receive a patient ATLS protocol and prepare the patient for surgery well these three points are very important you have to know how to receive and start from the receiving the patient till the patient reaches in OT you must know all the steps I have seen people who have done their degree but they don't know how to receive a patient and in their private practice they uh, do blunders by uh, omitting many important steps so in emergency department learn how to behave as a resident you are a resident you are not a professor learn how to stay calm with the patient how to be tolerant patient and don't ignore patients complain don't be aggressive there is no fun in being aggressive if you're tolerant patient you will feel a lot of blessings on you in emergency department don't jump to do surgery in the first year assist 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 and prepare the patient even if you are given a surgery you have not done uh, you haven't even assisted then refuse and ask for supervision Maybe it's surprising for you, but I'm telling you it will benefit a lot in your life. Wash up with every surgeon, even uh, a surgeon uh, whom you think that he's not a good surgeon, wash up with him as well because you will learn what not to do. And then in emergency department, what three things you must have in your cupboard? These are online um, handbook of fractures book, auto bullet, trauma section in your cupboard or online and online AOSR app. These are very important. Then comes the golden tips. I uh, really wanted to discuss this in the start, but I think first let me familiarize you a bit and then I'll discuss. Be goal oriented. Never uh, get distracted. Never get distracted. Never get distracted. Be goal oriented. Your goal is to be uh, to train, to be to get training, to pass the exam, and to be a good surgeon. Be patient. Uh, Allah helps those who are tolerant, patient, obedient. Be obedient to your supervisor and your seniors. Don't try to be aggressive at all. 
online ortho stuff videos uh, articles keep reading keep watching present your case to professor and consultant right at your first year because get yourself humiliated here but not in the exam so it's better to present your case to the professor or the consultant and the last point it's the most important point even in my whole presentation it is the most important point be in ward half hour before the time half hour before the time and leave the ward on time or half hour after i have learned all these things from a mentor from a professor from a supervisor and i am really thankful to him that the things i have written over here these are extremely important if you are in the ward half hour before you may think yourself fool in the beginning but later on you will feel that you 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 will feel yourself special and different be in ward half hour before be sincere to your patients be sincere to your beds and leave the ward on time inshallah taala it will help you a lot i'll make couple of uh, more videos for year 2 and year 3 and for synopsis i'll make another video although uh, synopsis must be written at the uh, uh, when your first year of residency ends but i i have not mentioned it but keep in mind in all this time you have to write your synopsis in the first year i'll make another video on that so uh, till now for all my uh, colleagues who are in the first year of residency do watch my video give me feedback if you have any and i'll make the video for second and third year as well thank you so much uh, may allah bless you all and i hope the video will serve the purpose